And then uh, how long after he gets locked up does he actually get killed in prison? Well, the true story with that Felix is that it was a, one of these guys that he was pretty cool with in prison that had got a debt. And um, the guy didn't pay his debt. This guy used to hang around on Felix. And the guy who he owed the money to wanted his little money, a small amount of money, because in prison, a small amount of money gets you hurt, you know. And so what happened is, Felix had never been to prison before, so he didn't really know the prison politics. He wasn't too sure with the prison politics, you know. So Felix got killed on a fluke back then. That wasn't really meant for him. It's just that he was dealing with one of the guys who had the debt. And when the guys, when the guys was upset about their money, they knew how much power Felix had. So they felt that if, if we move on Felix, we can kill the head. So that's what ended up kind of happening with that situation. Felix got killed on, on the fluke back then, man. He, should, he shouldn't have never died about something like that back then, you know? Okay. And I guess his funeral was, was on another level. Uh, <laughs> he had, like, horses, you know, you know, pulling his casket, and it was, like, 14 Rolls Royce limousines. It was, like, you know, like the president of, of, of America got killed or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, that was, um, you for know, a young kid, man, that was a sight to see, man, to see... Um, this guy from the streets, man, to be carried in a carriage with these horses, man, in his casket, man, with all these Rolls Royces. But if you knew Fle Felix, man, they called him Felix the Cat, right? Because he was he, he was suave, he was fly, right? He wouldn't have wanted it no other way, man, than, than, than to go out in that way because he knew that people was going to be talking about this funeral for many years, you know? And still to this day, People would talk about Felix Mitchell's funeral, you know. And I was a young kid, you know. And um, I know that Felix, um, you know, did what he did. But at the end of the day, you know, I got love for Felix, you know, because um, that was my cousin's father. He was good to me. Um, he used to take me to the Feli shop when I was a little kid, you know. Back then, in Feli sweatsuits was real expensive, man, right? <laughs> And he would take me and Lil Wayne into the Feli shop and just tell, tell the people in there whatever they want, give it to them, you know. And all the kids would see us in the East West suits and we'd be smiling. We knew he was fly. So he exposed me to these things, man. And he, and he was a, 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 a his, his, his dressing was, was some dress, the way he dressed up, I never seen nobody as fly as this guy, you know. So he inspired me to want to, he inspired me to want to be fly, you know? And so, um, you know, a lot of people demise of him because of the things he did, and you know, but for me, it was some good sides to Felix too, you know, things he, he taught me too, you know? So, I'll always have respect for, for, for dude, you know, and, um, and have love for Felix, you know, because he inspired me, man, to try to be the best I can be at whatever I wanted to do in my life, you know? Okay. And, and, and did the debt, you know, well, with, with Felix getting pulled off the streets and then ultimately getting killed, did that kind of open the window, you know, for your organization, which I guess at one point was LDI, Little D Incorporated? Yeah, so um, what's the trip, man, is that um, at such a young age, I never thought that the responsibilities that fell on my shoulder would happen while still in high school. And when it came to me, I accepted it, you know. But I was my own man, though. What I mean by my own man is, is that when Felix was in the county jail before he got sentenced, he, he sent me a message and said he wanted to talk to me. And so I went up here to talk to Felix, you know. And the reason I went to talk to Felix was because my older homeboys, they didn't like what I was doing out here in the streets. And what they didn't like was that I was building relationships with guys from different neighborhoods that my older partner homeboys was not getting along with. 
where they didn't have wars with, right? So they was reporting to Felix, telling Felix, you need to talk to D because D out here dealing with these guys in West Oakland and Richmond. And you know, we don't deal with them dudes, man. And you need to talk to him. He getting big headed. Now, mind you, man, I'm a teenager. I go to the county jail and go see Felix face to face. And he says to me, he say, hey, man, um, I've been hearing you've been hanging down in the acorns and that was the Oakland, man. You know, that's dangerous, man. You know, we don't get along with them dudes down there. And I listened to him because I respect the dude. You know, I let him talk. And I said to him, well, man, let me tell you my side, you know. I said, man, I respect you and my older homeboys, and I always respected what y'all did, but I got a different philosophy. And I said, well, my philosophy is, I don't want all that violence that I seen going on with y'all and y'all crew. I just want to get some money, man. So if me and these guys build alliances and problems come up, we can have conversations before it leads to violence. I said, I feel comfortable going in the acorns in Richmond because I didn't build a relationship with these dudes. They're not going to let nothing happen to me, right? I said, and the more relationship that I build with these guys, it's going to be less violence and we're going to all get more money because we don't have to be worrying about looking over our shoulders or we can't go in this neighborhood or in that neighborhood. So after this conversation with Felix, he said to me, he said, well, look, man, I'm going to jail for the rest of my life. You know, you out here, you done made a, a choice of getting in the streets. I always told you what the consequences were. So if that's what you want to do, man, I just want you to be careful, but you got my blessings. And I said, I, I appreciate that. So he sent word to some of my other older homeboys who was in the mob and told him that's what he want to do. Let him, let him do what he, what he do. And he, he, he gave me his blessings. Okay. So, so you started selling crack at, was it 16? No, I was like, um, yeah, about, about 16. Yeah, about 16. Yeah, about 16. And when I was in high school, going to Fremont High. Okay. And by 18 years old, you had stacked millions of dollars. I, by 18 years old, I was a millionaire. Okay. And this was by, you know, running an organization where, you know, you prevented wars between the different neighborhoods. And also, I guess you, you kind of initiated a practice where, you know, the, the addicts wouldn't get ripped off and so forth. You know, you I, ran it I, I more also, corporate than, also than the guys before you. I stressed it to the guys that worked for me and that was hustling in the streets to not be mistreating the people who come and buying the, the, the drugs from you because I watched them get taken advantage of by certain individuals who was in position of power. So I stressed it to the guys that I was dealing with, don't mistreat, don't mistreat these people. That could be your auntie or your uncle. And the, them people love me still today for being that kind, even though I was doing wrong, but I still demanded that the guys who was dealing with them don't take advantage of them in that situation, you know? Okay. So, I mean, you're talking about millions of dollars that, that you're saving. So you're talking about kilos and kilos and kilos of cocaine running through your organization. Um, could you say where all this cocaine was coming from? No, I, I couldn't say that. I couldn't say that, and I wouldn't say that, though, because what I would never do is, is um, even when I share my story, I'll never jeopardize somebody's freedom or um, exposing somebody about my lifestyle because I, it's a lot of guys, they're not comfortable with ever doing an interview or doing a book, but with me, the reason I'm comfortable with it is because I know that I've never crossed nobody. I would never cross nobody. And when they gave me 35 years, I had the opportunity to go home and I made it clear to the FBI, man, that nobody forced me to do what I was doing. Whatever I'm sitting get, I'm sitting and taking on the chin by myself. <laughs> 